Hi guys, welcome back to Biz Finance. On this channel I go through all things accounting, finance, investment related. So if you like this kind of stuff, do consider subscribing and otherwise let's get straight into the video. Now, in today's video, we're going to go ahead and have a look at how we account for an asset addition, an asset disposal, accumulated depreciation and a part exchange. Now, we're going to keep things very, very simple. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is how we account for an asset addition. So if we've got a piece of machinery that costs £10,000 and we pay for that machinery that day, the first thing we're going to do is credit our bank. So we're going to credit it, the bank nominal on the balance sheet with £10,000 which means that we need to put the debit somewhere on the balance sheet. Now, we're going to put that to something called machinery cost on the balance sheet because we're going to account for that machinery as an asset on the balance sheet, whereas we're going to account for the payment of that as a credit to the bank to reduce the bank balance. Okay. Now, any asset that you look at is going to depreciate over time, whether that be through the use of the asset, through depletion or economic reasons such as that piece of machinery might be replaced by a more modern version of that, so an upgraded version of that piece of machinery. So if we imagine that the machinery that we've purchased for 10k only has a useful life of five years, but what do we mean by useful life? So useful life is just the amount of time that we expect to have that asset in use, i.e. if we say that the asset needs replacing again in five years time, it has a useful life of five years. So it means that we're going to depreciate that asset over five years. So we have different ways of depreciation, but we're going to keep it very, very simple and have a look at the straight line method. So we also have the reducing balance method and the units of output method, but we're just going to look at the straight line method. And with the straight line method, all we're going to do is take that £10,000 divided by five, as in the five years that it's depreciating over, and that then gives us 2k per year. So we're going to depreciate the asset by 2k every year. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to put a cost as a debit through the profit and loss account. So a debit to the profit and loss account of £2,000. And then we're going to credit a nominal that's called accumulated depreciation on the balance sheet. And the reason why it's a negative on the balance sheet is because we're reducing this 10k carrying value by £2,000 every year. So that by the end of the year one, we're going to have a carrying value of 8k. By the end of year two, we'll have a 6k carrying value, 4k, 2k, and then nothing by the time that we've fully depreciated the asset. Now, imagine that I decide to go ahead and dispose of the asset in year four, so at the end of year four. So by that point, I've already had four years of depreciation on the asset, as in two, four, six, eight, eight k of depreciation. So the 10k of cost minus the 8k gives me 2k net book value at this point in time. So I dispose of it without receiving any money for the asset at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna credit the cost account, the machinery cost account by 10K so that that 10K that I had originally minus this 10K gets nothing. So you're stripping out that cost. The accumulated depreciation, I'm going to debit because currently I've got 8K negative on the balance sheet. So if I debit 8K, that brings that down to nothing. But then that means that I have 2K as a debit left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to debit something called the asset disposal account by 2k. And in order to clear that down, I'm going to credit that and debit that 2k to the profit and loss account. So what you're doing by doing that is moving that loss on disposal because if you get nothing back for an asset that's got a current value of 2k, then it's a loss on disposal of 2k. So I'm going to put that onto the profit and loss account. Now, imagine that I actually received money for the disposal of this asset. So say that I received £3,000 for the disposal of that asset. I'm going to do the first two journals. So I'm still going to credit cost by 10k, debit accumulated appreciation by 8k, and I'm going to debit the disposals account by 2k as well. But when I receive the money in the bank, I'm going to debit the bank because I'm increasing the bank balance on the balance sheet, and I'm going to credit this disposals account by 3,000 pounds. So if I've got a debit on this side and a credit on this side, so a debit of 2k, credit of 3k, that means that overall I've now got a profit on disposal of £1,000. And if you just think of that without even looking at any of the accounts, you've had a carrying value of £2,000 but you've received £3,000 for it. So that means you've got the profit of 1k. And what we do there, because you've got two on this side, three on this side, balance this off, I need to debit that disposal account by 1k and credit the profit and loss account. So the reason why that's a gain there again is because if you look at the profit and loss account, costs that go through there are a positive. So 
depreciations are positive, costs, admin costs are all positive, whereas turnover, for instance, is a negative in the profit and loss account. So if I'm putting a negative onto the profit and loss account, I'm putting a profit on disposal into that. Now imagine an instance where I've actually received a part exchange. So if I say, decide that I'm going to buy a machine for £20,000, but the part exchange on that is £1,000. What I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to do my usual journals. So I'm going to credit the cost account by 10. I'm going to debit accumulated depreciation and I'm going to debit this disposals account by 2K. So debit accumulated depreciation 8K and debit the disposals account by 2K. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to debit the cost account with this part exchange of £1,000 and I'm going to credit the disposals account with £1,000. So then because that asset costs £20,000 but I've had a part exchange, I'm only going to pay £19 in the bank. So I'm going to debit machinery costs by £19,000 and I'm going to credit the bank by £19,000 to reduce the bank balance. And then whatever's left in this disposals account, which is going to be the debit £2,000 and the credit 1K, it means that we've actually got a loss on disposal there of £1,000. So I'm going to credit this disposals account with £1,000 and I'm going to debit the P&L account with £1,000 so that that then nets off. So I hope you found all of that useful. Do consider subscribing as always and I shall see you on the next video.